coming right there. <laughs> All right, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. We are gonna talk about how to zero your low power variable optics are very, very common now. Now, if you go back in our video archive, we've got a video, how to zero EOTech, how to zero iron sights, how to zero red dot optic like an aim point. We've got one, how to zero the iron sights on an AK, right? So if you're interested in those, that's not today, right? Uh, you can find those videos in our video archive. Uh, a very common sight today is the LPVO or low power variable optics. All different companies make them. Uh, this particular one is made by Primary Arms. Right? So, but it doesn't really zero like, uh, like an Aimpoint or an EOTech does. Right? It's, there's a few different uh, little things that we're gonna uh, cover. Nothing hard, nothing crazy, but uh, just understand that uh, certain things vary by whatever brand scope it is, what the magnification is, what your reticle is, but a lot of the stuff stays the same. So first off, what distance do we need to zero at? And, and it's going to depend on the reticle that you're running. Uh, what I mean by that is if you've just got a regular duplex uh, crossed uh, crosshairs, and it doesn't really matter, then you can zero basically any distance you want, right? If you're running a reticle that's got a mill reticle, for example, this one has in it, then uh, again, you can zero at whatever you want because you're gonna be running your data off of, you know, off of the data in your, your, uh, your ballistic computer, you know, your smartphone or whatever, right? If you're running a, what we call a BDC or a bullet drop compensator, those run basically two ways. One of them can be a reticle that has a BDC marked uh, distances already on it, or you just have a regular uh, uh, crosshairs and the BDC is actually your elevation knob. If that's the case, then you would put it on 100 meters or 100 yards, you'd zero it at 100 yards, all right? Uh, so anyway, this particular scope, it's got, again, it's made by Primary Arms. It's got what's called a Griffin Mill reticle. So it's in mills, but it also has got a BDC segment down the middle of it. It's, it's a cool scope, I like it, but it really doesn't matter. I'm not saying you have to use that. What I'm saying is zero for whatever works best for your reticle. Now, if you're not gonna ever mess with your scope, you just want the crosshair centered, then uh, you know, a lot of people would say that they zero at 50 meters or uh, 100 yards. If, if you're never gonna touch it, go with what we call a point blank zero. And for 5.56 five, and 308, this is a 308 uh, AR-10 here, uh, that's normally 200 meters or 210 meters, again, depending on the ammo, barrel length, all that stuff. Now, this is a uh, 7.62 by 51, a 308 rifle, but it only has a 12 and a half inch barrel, right? So for me, that crosses line of sight at 70 meters, crosses again at 50 meters, or I mean at 100 meters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero this gun at 100 meters, we're sitting at the 100 meter yard line, and then after that, I will just use the mill reticle inside that Griffin reticle uh, to then hold for further distances out. So again, deciding on that zero distance depends on what reticle uh, you were shooting at. Doesn't matter, first focal plane, second focal plane, depends on how you're planning to actually use the gun, the reticle that you've got. All right, so first thing you wanna do is you wanna get into a stable firing position, right? A lot of people will shoot, uh, they'll zero their guns on sitting, um, that's fine, you know, off of a shooting base, that's fine. Us in the military, predominantly, we zero prone position. You're walking across the battlefield, gunfire goes off, you're gonna be laying down, you're gonna be hugging that planet. Very stable position. Support the front of the gun, do not rest the barrel on anything, especially if you've got a free floating barrel, full hand guard like we have right here. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot at the scope, we're gonna place the scope on max magnification. All right, so if you have a one, in this case, a one to eight scope, one to six, one to 10, whatever it is, we're gonna place it all the way up onto the max magnification. All right, now, from there, I want you to check your eye relief. Now, this scope has a very deep eye relief. You can bring your eye fairly close and fairly further back. But basically, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you move that eye, closer and further away from the scope, you're gonna see you're gonna get a shadow around the sides of it. I want you to adjust it so that you do not see any shadow anywhere. All right, that's checking that eye relief. All right, now, from there, I want you to uh, focus your reticle. 
How you do that is the back of the scope right here has got a ocular adjustment back and forth. Now, I'm not going to move it because Emery has already adjusted this reticle. It is crystal clear for him. Now, mind you, again, this is ocular focus for the reticle, right? You're not focusing the target out there, right? You are focusing the reticle. I want the reticle to be crystal clear. Now, I, I want to talk about parallax for a second. Now, a, a lot of your higher end sniper scopes will actually have a separate knob on the left side that is for dialing out parallax. In other words, putting the target on the same focal plane as your reticle. So if you moved your head a little bit left, right, up or down, it's not gonna throw off the zero of the gun. Now this scope does have a knob on the left side, but it is not a parallax knob, it's not. It is for, uh, a, that's the Rena step for adjusting the illuminated reticle. Now since this scope does not have a knob for adjusting parallax, we have to do our best to deal with any parallax issues at all. And how we do that is, again, I mentioned that shadow, left, right, top, or bottom. I want Emery to slide his head either in a little bit or out a little bit till he just sees that shadow and then move your head left, right, up and down. So I want that shadow to be equal on all sides. What, what he's doing is he is making sure that that pupil, the center of his eye that he's looking through, is perfectly centered through the center of that scope. Right? It's kind of like you lining up the front sight with the rear sight when you're shooting iron sights. Right? Because if you're not doing, you're just putting the crosshairs on it. If your eye is left right from the last time you shot, you're going to find those shot groups are going to run right and left. So make sure you're trying to make your scope, your, your firing position, how the body's married to the gun, that cheek weld as much the same, same as possible, and that's gonna alleviate any parallax for you. Now, once you've done that, we're ready to shoot, all right? We're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Emery send his first five round shot group. All right, now I'm gonna just, our target, he's shooting at a, a bullseye target down at the 100 meter line, and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have him shoot a five round shot group. I don't care if he can see his holes, I don't want him to move, I want him to hold the same place every time, five rounds. Five rounds on you. All right, back on safe. All right, we're good, let's go check it out. All right, so now he's shot his shot group, we're gonna just mark his shot group. All right, I've got one, two, three, four bullets, that's a decent group. And then he had to screw it up, he tossed one high. That's all right, that's all right. All right, but basically, um, you tell by looking at, I need to move it right. I mean, I mean, I need to move it left, I need to move it up. but. Let's be a little more specific because we have got a low power variable optic scope that has adjustments on it. So ruler, nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, if you're running an MOA scope, then uh, run one in inches. Basically what I'm talking about is if you have a scope that adjusts in minutes of angle, that is one inch at 100 yards, two inches at 200 yards, three inches at 300 yards, right? In our case, we're running a scope that has mill adjustments. Now, it doesn't adjust in one mill, it actually adjusts in tenths of a mill. We're shooting at 100 meters. At 100 meters, each click, each tenth of a mill is one centimeter, right? So for me to make my adjustments, we're gonna go back to the 100 meter line, I need to know how many centimeters. I'm not gonna just guess, I'm not gonna just go, I need to move it that much. Measure it, it's not that hard. Bring a ruler with you. I, I have a ruler that's inches on one side, so my students run MOAs, and then mo the majority of the students run uh, mills. So I'm gonna measure this. Basically, we're gonna go uh, seven. We're gonna, we, he's seven right, we need to go left seven. And then from the center of the shot group, three. So he needs to go up three centimeters, left seven centimeters. Piece of cake, let's have, that's all there is to it. Let's go back, let's, uh, 
let's go shoot another five rounds. All right, so we're back up at the gun. We were right and low, remember? But how much were we right and low? We're not gonna just randomly dial knobs here, all right? We were seven centimeters right and we were three centimeters low. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, our adjustments on this scope are uh, one-tenth of a mil. What that means is basically, we're at a 100 meter line, every click is gonna be one centimeter. Makes for easy math. It's not. It's nothing crazy. We're zeroing at 100 meters. We're, we have a scope that's adjustable in one-tenth of a mil. All we're gonna do, remember, we were uh, seven centimeters to the right, so I'm gonna move him seven clicks to the left. All right, make sure I'm going in the right direction here. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, and then we were, how many low? Three. Three low, I'm gonna come up. Three, one, two, three. Guys, it's not magic, it's really not. I'm not gonna put the cup, caps back on now, but I'm gonna have Emery send us that next five round shot group. All right, let's go down and check it out. All right, so we come back down and make our second adjustment for Emery. I, his shot group is, he opened up a little bit. He runs, he runs his, his rounds high, high, on both, high and low on both ones, no big deal, all right? But if you look at it, his far left bullet, right there, far right bullet right there, exact same distance on both sides. Top bullet, uh, uh, right there. Bottom two bullets right there. Guys, that shot group, it's centered left to right, it's centered up and down. We're gonna call that gun zero. Literally, that's all there is to it. Let's go wrap this video up. Okay guys, if we had to adjust again, we would, but it, Emery's dead on, ball's accurate, right in the center of that thing. All right, so we're back up here. Before we put our scope caps on though, um, what a lot of people will want to do is they'll actually what we call slip our scales. If you're somebody that's gonna dial uh, dope, for example, you're gonna dial adjustments magnification, then now would be the time you take those small Allen wrenches and adjust it. We don't do that uh, on these scopes. We just do holdovers with the metal reticle in it. Uh, but if you are, now would be the time you'd want to uh, slip those scales. Again, we don't do it, so we're just gonna put the caps back on. Now, one thing you do wanna do though is, we're good, we know he's good. I, I don't wanna cross thread it. All right, there you go, you're all set. We know he's good at 100 meters, right? We know he's got the, the uh, mill reticle in there for our, our, our other distances, but what we're still gonna do is we're still gonna go out and confirm data at different distances. So anyways, that's all there is, that's all there is to it. And again, if you want to see out of zero all those other uh, types of optics, EOTEX, AKs, red dots, whatever, you can find those video in our video archive any questions, leave them below. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.